Hello. Hello, how is everyone? What are you guys up to? Hey, Taxi. Oh, well, oh. Hey, Taxi. Oh. oh, hello, hello. Hey, Taxi. Oh my gosh, hello. Hey, Taxi. Hello, Bum. Hello, Lapsod. Hello, Jazzadog. Hello, Chill Watching. Hello, Lick the Goose Hog. Hello, Fuzzy Baffle. Hello, Xylos. Oh my gosh. Hello, everyone. How you guys doing? How you guys doing? I just had to quickly set up my chat better on OBS, but apparently you can't do it hey, without taxi. reconnecting your stream. So we're we're back. At the taxi. Oh my god. Oh my god, it's over there. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Well, it's over there. <laughs> Thank you for the pets. <laughs> How am I? I'm doing okay. How is everyone else? What are you guys up to? There we go. I'm fixing up my chat on the fly. Nothing much on your end, just laying down? Laying down's good. I wish I was laying down. Freezing quietly. It is a bit chilly tonight. I got a hoodie and a blankie on. Having some cough. Mm. Freezing loudly. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's, it's a bit chilly. It's a bit chilly. Hmm. <laughs> Thank you for the pets. <laughs> Sorry it's over there for some reason. It's just full. You prefer this than the warm summer? Yeah, I definitely prefer cooler weather than hotter weather. It's easier to get warmer than it is to get cooler in summer. It's not cursed pets. <laughs> You've been living in the Udi again? I may have worn one today. Normally you prefer warm, but the summer overdid it. Ah. Hmm. All right, I should be able to see BTTV emotes and stuff like that again because uh, my chat on OBS was just the default chat. So I should be able to see them now. Maybe. <laughs> hmm. Hope you're having a wonderful day. My day's been pretty good. I don't think I've done a lot though, but it's been pretty good. Hmm. Hey, taxi. Diva, hello. Bonnie, hello. Need to get your lazy bum to make some tea. Oh, tea would be nice. Hey, Dino, hello. You all can see the you, you can hear the the high taxi thing. You can hear it. Fuzzy Bapple made you a coffee. You're in your work break. I hope your break goes well, Dino. You have Dino Nuggies and Potato Jams. Oh, that sounds like the best combo, Diva. Oh my god, I want Potato Jams. Oh my god.
All right. All right, all right, all right. So. So. It's Monday, isn't it? How was everyone's weekend? What did you guys get up to? Who doesn't love potato gems? I fucking love potato gems. Potato gems and hash browns. Like, the pinnacle of potato. Delicious. I love when they chop up potato into little bits, then construct it into a potato again. Amazing. Still just working? Oh no. Oh no. I don't know. I wonder if I could do a ranking of potato. Potato. Way that you eat potatoes. Just like chicken nuggies? Yeah, they're both just incredibly processed and then mashed up into the into the shape of something you can eat again. Potato made out of small potatoes. Amazing. Perfect. Potato is amazing. What's everyone's favorite way that you have potato? Like what what's everyone's favorite potato uh snack? Highlight was eating out with Dino Sis. What did you eat? Potato tots? So potato gems. That's what we call them here. You like chippies, Dino? What sort of chippies? Like like standard cut or like like the the big steak cut or or fries? You like eating a potato like an apple. Lapsod, that will make you unwell. You like Korean hot dogs with a potato crust? I've wanted to try one of them so badly. I need to go somewhere. Hurried potato bake. Ooh. You're fully sick, Lapsod. Gems and bag chippies. What's your favorite flavor of bag chippies, Fuzzy Babble? Hurried potato bake sounds good. Potato bake is good, though. Like... I think one of the states in Australia call, calls them scalloped potatoes. But then we have potato scallops, which are potato cakes in other states. <laughs> oh my god, Australia has some strong arguments against their potato namings. Um, sweet chili or just salt? Mm, the sweet chili sour cream delicious and salt and just plain salted is also very good you never get sick of mecca's fries you also love bag chippies and sweet potato chips i'm not a huge fan of sweet potato chips like i like baked sweet potato like you know if you just chop it up into chunks but like in thin fry form they're just floppy, like they don't crisp up like chips. I don't, maybe I've just not had good sweet potato chips before, but they tend to not be the right texture for me. You've had some good crispy ones, but they're rare. Hmm. It is a scallop. You prefer thick chips? I love, um, I don't get them often, but I love beer battered chips. Beer battered fries, they're so good. And I love roasted potato. And roasted sweet potato, amazing. You had crispy ones, but they aren't common. Yeah, they're just usually, they're just usually soft and floppy. And that's not what I want in a chip. I want something that holds its form and you can dunk it in a sauce. But if it's just floppy, it just flops in the sauce and it's sad. And then you try and lift up, lift it up to your mouth, but the sauce has made it too heavy. And then it just flops. You'll ever, you, you, you'll ever, ever experience that when you're, when you're a bit too floppy. Grilled does sweet potato fries, but they're always soggy and floppy. No, I've never had grilled before. I've never had it before. I 
I know I'm pretty sure they do like a mushroom burger or something, so it's never been something that I've tried because I'm not a huge mushroom fan. But it seems to be most most meat substitute things are mushrooms. Uh, up here, A and W does sweet potato fries and serve them with chipotle mayo. Ooh, that sounds good. Like the taste of sweet potato fries, delicious. But it's just the texture thing. Like they're just not, they're not chips to me. I'd rather just have a a chunk of baked sweet potato than it in fry form because it's just the structure just doesn't go well. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. Does it, is anyone is anyone a fan of Deb? Like the instant mashed potato stuff? Yes, I know laughs on it. <laughs> Deva loves taxables. Yuck. That's what you have when you have potatoes. You love it. Hello, S said reality. How are you? You haven't had it, Dino? You haven't had it. Interesting. See, I I don't know. I feel like it was a staple in our household. Uh I think I've spoken about this before. Um uh, but the place that I used to live when I was a kid used to often get flooded in. So we used to have like things that were like, like, um, long shelf life on them. So we had like, um, powdered milk and, and Deb and stuff like that. So it was like a staple in my household. Used to get the Deb with onion bits, but you can't find them anymore. I have tried that before, and honestly, I just love the plain Deb. <laughs> uh, there's a burger chain that has a veggie burger with a patty being portobello mushroom that's breaded and deep fried. Oh. So that seems like too much for me. I, c I could probably have them if they're like, you know, mushed up mushrooms with flavorings and stuff like that but a whole mushroom piece that seems like way too much yeah i'm doing well thank you but yeah i'm 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 certainly a fan of deb you just add hot water and you got mashed potato it's so good for like like a lunch or something when it's like win like it's so good in winter because the bowl is hot because you poured hot water in it and you hold it and, you and then you eat in the hot mashed potato and it's fucking delicious fucking delicious it's such a cozy cozy uh nostalgic food for me You spill the boiling water on your hand and swear. Look, I do that so many times. You pour it in and then you start mixing the deb in with the water and then suddenly you've got a splash of like like watery watery boiled deb on you. <laughs> Lapsod agrees. Lap Lapsod has experienced this as well. <laughs> Man, I could grow some deb. I might have to buy some. God damn it. <laughs> I love that. I have to use that next time. I might need to get some Deb. Maybe I have some in the cupboard, but it might be really old. I'll have to have a look. All right. Are you guys keen for Ace Attorney? Are you guys keen? I'm keen. I would like to play. So I think we're on the second case, starting it from like now. Like the first part of the second case. My category is WoW. Oh my god! We're playing WoW! <laughs> my 
title, says Ace Attorney. No. What? I want to play Ace Attorney. I'm not used to having to update my, um, my titles and stuff like that manually. <laughs> I thought you were making a joke. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm playing Ace Attorney tonight. But yeah, now that I'm with, um, now that I'm using OBS, um, I have to like manually update my, my stream stuff. I also need to tweet for myself. Um, yeah, it's less automated than Streamlabs was. But yes, no, we're playing Ace Attorney tonight. I'm very sorry for the confusion. We will be playing WoW tomorrow night, though. Um, we have a cheeky little um, cleanup raid uh, that we didn't get to finish on Saturday, so we're going to do it Tuesday night. So I might play a little bit of WoW and then do the raid. That will be my stream tomorrow. Yeah. All right, we're going to switch to Ace Attorney. Yeah. Um in the wrong spot. All right, so yeah, we're, we're on the second case. Second case. Oh yeah, Bum, can you confirm it's not echoing? I remember last time I streamed it, you said it was echoing. I think it should be fine. No, it's because it was echoing. He sent me a clip. You gonna shit? You gonna shit, Diva? You gonna piss and shit? All right, I'm going to say it's fine because the setting should be fine. Should be fine. Memoirs of the Clouded Kokoro. Let's go. Leo, here he is. <laughs> so we saw the opening, but it didn't really show us a lot. So we're going to continue on. Everything's going according to Kokoro. Uh, there you are at last. Good morning, Mr. Sharms. I think not. Oh. You're late. What on earth took you so long? Your telegram only arrived at five o'clock, Mr. Sharms, and it's a 20 minute ride to the hospital. That's right, and it's half past five now. I think we made very good time. The time is utterly irrelevant. The fact is, I have been waiting for what has felt like an eternity. Sharm's jump scare. It fucking was. In point of fact, I myself was awoken at four this morning by a telegram boy. And feeling it was somewhat unjust that I alone had been roused at such an hour, I sent one to you. Well, thanks for that. God, he's... he's such a fucking mood. Like, if I need to be awake, you also need to be awake. <laughs> anyway, you're here now. So, the victim is over there. She only just regained consciousness. Oh, You should introduce yourselves. And I shall observe from here. So this was the victim uh, in one of the previous cases. There you go. So there's the lady who was found on the snow-covered pavement with the knife in her back. Her name is... Ah, yes. Here we are. Miss Green. That, that's her name. I want to look at the little mouse. A mouse, Mr. Narahodo. An enormous mouse. Hmm. Vermin at a hospital? That doesn't seem the best. But it looks like a very healthy specimen, doesn't it? It's very plump. 
I'm not sure we can say that's down to the excellence of this facility, if that's what you're thinking. It is a very good specimen. Look, there's a photograph in this frame here. Ah oh yes, it's a picture of a young gentleman. He looks to be about the same age as Miss Green, I would say. Perhaps the young woman's special someone, do you think? Hmm. My, my, Mr. Naruhoto, I didn't know you had a sense for matters of the heart. Not in the least, I sincerely said the first thing I thought of. Is she a painter? She was a student, wasn't she? I can't remember. This rounded wooden figure isn't the most charming, is it? Uh, I don't think that's a decoration, Mr. Naruhoto. It's an artist mannequin, I believe, used when practicing sketching the human form in different poses. Really? It's not exactly what you'd call a typical figure for that purpose, though, is it? No, I suppose not. I confess I've never seen one quite so full-figured before. Well, if you want to draw a full-figured person, it's the right tool for the job. I wonder what the painting is on the ground. I can't inspect it. Oh, this looks like the patient's treatment notes. Let's see. Do not feed. What is this place, a zoo? You know, I seem to remember seeing an almost identical sign at our local park. For the pigeons, yes. This is a person. Poor woman, I hope she hasn't read this. Oh, she looks so sad. There are lots of bottles in that cabinet, aren't there? Do you think it's safe to keep them like that? If you were a patient here, I fit I'm sure you'd take some medicine by mistake when you were half asleep. That is a worry, but at least the cabinet has a lock, even if it's only a flimsy looking one. Oh, no doubt you'd manage to unlock that somehow while you were half asleep as well. There are limits even to what I can do when I'm half asleep, you know, Miss Susito. Is he known to sleepwalk? Tea has been made, nice. I'm glad. Maybe I should make something. On my break, I will make a hot drink. That must be the bag of Miss Green's personal belongings. She would have had to been brought directly here after she was found stabbed in the pavement, though. I expect a friend or family member probably bought some things for her. Alright then, let's see what's inside. A change of clothes now, no doubt, and... No, Mr. Naruhoto, you must never scrutinize a young maiden's personal belongings. But the young maiden might have chocolates, or biscuits, or caramel. He wants to eat the snacks. And she's right in front of him. Um, good morning. Aww, she's an artist. Look at her little paintbrushes. She looks like a Legend of Zelda character, actually. Like, she looks like she should be, like... She'd, she'd match, like, the Zelda style. Hello, um, I'm a Runosuke Naruhoto from the Empire of Japan. She fits in that universe? Yeah. Oh, she's cute. Oh no, was it your knife that... Are you the man who... No, 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 I'm a lawyer. And I'm Suzuto Mikotaba. I'm pleased to meet you. Oh no, was it your knife then? Are you the one? No, 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 I assure you, I'm Mr. Naruhoto's judicial assistant. We heard that you regained consciousness and we wanted to come give you our best wishes. Best wishes? For me? Um, thank you. I'm Olive, Olive Green. I'm an artist. Well, no, that's not right, is it? What I mean is, I'm trying to be an artist. Well, what I really mean is, I desperately want to be an artist. But the truth is, I don't have much- I don't have any talent. I know I don't. It's no wonder I was stabbed in the back. I don't think that's related, actually. You love her? She's so cute! Gosh, this young woman seems to bend over backwards to put herself down. Seeing as we're here, we should ask her about what happened from her perspective, I suppose. To 
suddenly be struck, to, struck in the back by a blade as you were walking along the pavement. What a terrible experience you had, Miss Green. It was so cold that day, and the fog was so thick. I couldn't see a thing. That was four days ago now, I think. Is that right? Yes, that's right. I'm afraid you'd been comatose all that time. But the case has been solved, hasn't it? While well, I've been here in hospital. Here in hospital, I mean. Indeed it has, my dear madame. Spectacularly by none other than I, Herlock Sholmes. Mr. Sholmes, as you well know, it was Mr. Narahodo's hard work in the court that solved the case. Are you... Are you yet to hear what happened, Miss Green? Yes, I'm afraid so. A gentleman from the police force is supposed to be coming to fill me in shortly. Oh, I see. Me coming round seems to have made everyone frantically busy. I'm so sorry. I should never have regained consciousness. I was so it was selfish of me. Oh. Oh no. We're so relieved that that you're on the mend, Miss Green. We really are. With that kind of attitude, maybe her surname should be Blue, not Green. Oh. So you're an artist, are you, Miss Green? Oh no, I couldn't possibly claim that. I'm a fledgling artist at best. I mean, I'm a student of art, really. At the Thorndike Academy of Fine Arts. Oh my, an acad a academy of fine art. Great. Blah, 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 blah. An academy of fine arts. Great Britain has such a wonderful. is such a wonderful country. Tell me, Miss Green, do you live hereabouts? Oh, no, no, I actually... I don't deserve it, but I have a little flat on Brixton Road. I see. How very interesting. Oh, no, is it? Brixton is some ten shops away from the underground... From the, on the underground from here. And Thorndike Academy is a mere three-minute walk from Brixton Town Centre. Does that matter, Mr. Sholmes? Perhaps not, but Briar Road is far less... So Sal salubrious part of town by comparison dwelt in by those inferior means including the Maleficent Mr. Mustache inferior means I suppose the Seki-san does fit does fit the bill it struck me as somewhat out of the ordinary for a young fine arts student to be walking around such a district that's all What's this? She suddenly clammed up. Mr. Shome, you shouldn't- you should be ashamed of yourself prying into a young maiden's private affairs. Oh dear me, do forgive me. Um, if you don't mind. I'm being discharged shortly, so I need to pack up my things. Oh yes, of course, we won't keep you. Thank you so much, Miss Green. Is there a Mr. Narrow Fodder here? Mr. Narrow Fodder? Narrow Fodder now? Well, um, if you're looking for Narahodo, the lawyer, that's me, but. Ah, Mr. Narrow Fodder, good. This is for you. It's a message from Mr. Saucy Nutsmeg. Mr. Natsume sent a message to me. But why would a policeman be delivering a message from Mr. Natsume? Exactly, what's going on? What's a Scotland Yard constable doing pay paying delivery playing delivery boy at this time in the morning? Not Smeg. <laughs> Wish my name was narrow fodder. <laughs> ah, what are you waiting for? Let me see that. Oh. Well, this is most unexpected. Is something wrong, Mr. Sholmes? Is something wrong, Mr. Sholmes, he says. Have you not seen this note? No, how could I have? It would seem that London's criminals have no intention of letting, letting the great detective rest. A new case calls, a case of murder, no less. We must depart at once. Murder? Call a cab. Time is of the essence. But the trouble is... 
We've yet to read Mr. Natsume's note. I was thinking we ought to pay him a visit in his lodging is what we did. That will be entirely con convenient. Convenient? What do you mean? It's all here in the note, my dear fellows. Hey, Maramara, how are you? The murder we must investigate took place at Mr. Mustache's lodgings. Wait, what? I'll hail a f f fias? Yeah, yeah, I don't know. It was only yesterday that Soseki san was in court and we were dispelling doubts about his innocence. And now, the very next day, there's a murder at the man's own address. He may very well be un the unluckiest man alive. Or so it seemed to us at the time, but we were soon to discover it was worse than we thought. Mm. Oh my god. Hello? What on earth? Oh my, the gentleman is deceased, without question. He's dead. L -l -l Locum student, Mr. Naruhoto Esquire. Mr. Natsume. Uh oh, why? Why is this happening? Why to me? Thank you for the follow, welcome. I've only just got out of the court yesterday. I was finally home after two days of misery. And then I wake up next the next day to this, and no early bird should catch a worm like this. How are you not already following? You swear you followed? Well, welcome. Thank you for the follow. Just pass it on the table. <laughs> I see you're in high spirits again this morning, Mr. Mustache. Not the horrible Herlock Sholmes. Sure, shove off. Show yourself the door. I never invited you. Mr. Sholmes came here with us. I'm quite sure he'll be able to help you, Mr. Natsume. I'm entirely at your disposal, Mr. Mustache. What can I do for you? <laughs> Him! Here they are already. The busybodies. Ah, Inspector Gregson. What a pleasant surprise. Yum, yum, yum. Pleasant isn't, isn't it? Gives me heartburn, heartburn every time I see your face at the crime scene, Sholmes. Ha. Ah. I deduce, Inspector, that your heartburn is a result of your excessive consumption of fried food. Um, good morning, Inspector. This is a crime scene. Don't you go touch at anything. Or oh, good morning you, to you too, Sunshine. Hey, ultimate evil. Making a rare appearance. Oh, look at them all standing around. I look on the other side. Is that it? Boy, I said hands off. You're gonna mess up the crime scene. Oh, um, no, I just wanted to look. That's all. No chance. I know your kind. You'll mess it up just by looking at it. Ah, uh, someone's in a bad mood. There's certainly some bad air in here, isn't there? Alright, it sounds like I better talk to the inspector first and try to curry some favour. Look, oh, that's how you look around. I was confused. Okay, we've got to speak to him then. Actually, no, I want to speak to you. <laughs> What a terrible thing to have happened. It's only been three days since I was arrested for the incident on the pavement outside. And then, having finally regained my freedom, it starts happening all over again. Endless existence of excru excruciating experiences. So, the victim lived here on the ground floor and your room is one story up, isn't it? Why do you put a window there if there's a wall outside? I think that was brought up 
in the first game. It's just a really poor area, I think. But I can't remember the exact reason. Hey, taxi. They don't have any natural light in their house. Hey, Danny, how are you? You have several questions for the architect? <laughs> Yes, that's right. In a way, we were neighbours, I suppose. So did you know the victim? Were you friends? Oh. What's the matter with Soseki-san now? It was an innocent enough question, wasn't it? Why does he seem so shaken by it? Well, I, I suppose he was a complete- he wasn't a complete stranger. B -b -b but he, did he ever invite me to his room? No, never. On my honor, I swear it. What an extreme reaction. You're probably wishing you'd never asked now, aren't you, Mr. Naruhodo? When we found him here, I felt wretched, which is why I sent a word asking- Which is why I sent word asking for you to come. So that ins- Through that inspector over there. All right, let's speak to him. So, Inspector, what was the victim's name? Who was he? Mr. William Shamspear. <laughs> There's that guy. That guy is in a constant state of mental breakdown. He actually is. Hey, he was a lodger here. As you can probably tell, he was an actor. A bit of a dead loss as it happens, or just dead. Mr. Shamspear. It was the landlord, old Mr. Garadev, and the other lodger, Mr. Natsume, who found him. The fella didn't rise at his usual hour, so Garadev got worried and kicked down the door. But doesn't Mr. Garadev have a bad leg? Ah oh yeah, you're right there. It was the jittery Japanese hunchback over there who actually did the kicking. Really? Soseki-san? The victim was pretty hard up, it seems. Even done some time inside for petty crimes. He had no money, no place to go, and no friends. He had, his only acquaintances were the people in this house. A miserable life and a miserable end to it. So, what exactly is Mr. Natsume still doing here? He's not involved in the investigation, investigation so shouldn't you have sent him away from the crime scene? Well, I'm not saying it's because the fella looks odd or anything, or that he acts suspicious, but I thought it would be prudent to take a statement from the culprit, I mean, cohabitor. You nearly said culprit there, didn't you? Oh dear. Mr. Natsume appears to be under suspicion again. Story sounds fishy. <laughs> Chomping wedgies. Yummy. Uh, it certainly seems that way. He does just come across as such an odd fellow, doesn't he? Poor man, how unfortunate. Anyway, I can't say much until the coroner gets here. But I don't think the fella's been a goner that long. The body's still warm. Even if the inspector would allow it, I don't think I could bring myself to touch a dead body. Sharms, what the fuck are you doing? Um, Mr. Sharms, what are you doing? Ha, huh, you need only observe to, observe to know it, my dear fellow. Investigating, naturally. There's nothing natural about that pose. Mr. Sharms, have you made some miraculous discovery? Patience, my dear madame, patience. We've not been here in this room five minutes. So far, all I've managed to deduce is what actually happened. My goodness. But isn't that everything we need to know, Mr. Shames? Hmm. Now what do you propose the idea, I believe? Now that you propose the idea, I believe one could indeed see it that way. At the present time, I have managed to draw two incontro... Incontrovertible inco inco conclusions. He's asserting his dominance as a stand user. <laughs> 
The first, that there was a physical struggle here last night in which the victim fought for his life. Mr. Natsume, what's wrong? Is something that Mr. Shom said significant somehow? N no, don't mind me. Forget I was here. And my second conclusion is that there was a poison lingering in the air here last night that passed the victim's lips. N nonsense. Oh, he oh, why is he so sus? Oh. <laughs> He needs to shut his mouth. All right, Mr. Natsume, why are you reacting so so extremely to Mr. Sherm's deductions? No, 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 P please, P pretend I'm not here. Invisible, ineffable, inscrutable, insignificant, impossible to ignore. You must tell us everything, Mr. Sherm's. Spare no detail. But of course. Let the theatrical tragedy before us be unraveled by my great deductions, presented for your pleasure in two acts. We've heard some truly astounding great deductions from Mr. Sholmes in the past. No doubt this will be no exception. What miracles will unfold before our eyes this time? So, my dear fellows, for your delight and wonder, let the curtain rise for Herlock Sholmes's logical and reasoning spectacular, Act 1. Let's go. Careful observation of the victim reveals to us the events that trans transpired in the dis disconsolate room last night. Foam at the mouth of the, of the deceased clearly indicates the use of poison. Next to the victim, we notice a large dining plate which contains, you will observe, one half of a sizable bar of soap, meaningful indu indubitably. Why is the soap set so purposely upon the dish, like the victim's last supper? In fact, yes. Could it be that the man was about to eat it? Of course, the fork reveals the answer. It appears that the young man's appetite was his undoing. Taking up arms in the form of his cutlery, the victim engaged in a deadly battle for his life. The struggle against his hunger was in vain, for in the end he couldn't resist devouring the slippery feast. But London's foul soap is bes bes besmirched by foul poison. Yes, the victim's life was claimed by poison that tainted the contents of the plate. The soap and the leather and the lather about the young men's mouth are too perfectly matched to ignore. The cause of death was clearly intoxication due to excessive ingestion of a foul soap. People like him is why shampoo has instructions. <laughs> Mr. Natsume, is, is there something you're not telling us? Y yeah, obviously. So personally, I have a greater interest in the taste of foul... Charms, are you eating wax? <laughs> I have a greater interest in the taste of foul candle wax, of course. <laughs> Mr. Charms here eating crayons. He's the crayon eating kid. The cause of death identified, we proceed to Act 2, where we ponder the next question. Was this suicide or murder? The audience will recall the death occurred during the victim's last supper. Did the man die and, and die alone? This single teacup suggests the answer. To draw a conclusion on such meagre evidence would be foolish, however, certainly. A careful criminal could have absorbed his own could have absconded with his own cup over his tracks. Cover his tracks. Hey Cobalt, how are you? Perhaps what is losing? Well, allow me to lift the veil of doubt, my dear fellow. 
Indeed, what reveals the answer, of course, is the broken lock. Why? Though, forced open now, at the time of the incident, this door was locked. And the sole key was in the victim's pocket. In other words, when the victim consumed poison... He must have been alone. Alone with his inferior soap, from whence wafted an inferior scent. And with that acrid aroma lingering in the air, the victim met his end in a tragic solitude. We can take comfort only in the fact that his soul was well cleansed on his way to the hereafter. Very good, Sholmes. I love it. It absolutely sounds plausible. Thus concludes the final act of Herlock Sholmes' great deduction. There's just one thing, Mr. Sholmes. You are disposed to identifying just one thing, aren't you, Mr. Narhodo? Pray, what concerns you? Well, no matter how hungry he was, do you really think the man would have eaten soap? It's quite apparent this man had barely a penny to his name. It is a curious thing, but one so dis destitute soap can suddenly appear quite irresistibly appetizing. How extraordinary. In truth, I have tired I have tried a <laughs> I've tried a little soap myself in the past. You've eaten it, you mean? My dear fellow, it was some time ago now. My postulation was that it that it would cleanse my gut. If only Sharms had seen some of the soaps that look like food, I think he would have eaten it eaten it. And did it? As I writhed in agony on the floor and spit the contents of my stomach, yes, I believe it did. The experience taught me a valuable lesson, and soap is quite poisonous. It has an unpleasant taste and leads, leads to great discomfort. In summary, I cannot re recommend it. Believe me, I wouldn't eat it even if you did. And there's something that troubles me as well, actually. Oh, what's that? It's Mr. Natsune. I couldn't help noticing him shuddering and qu quivering out the corner of my eye. Almost as if Mr. Sholmes' deductions touched a nerve somehow. N n nonsense Well, that clenched teeth episode didn't last. I think, judging by Mr. Natsume's reaction, great detective's deductions may need some gentle corrections in order to reach the actual truth. Yes, Mr. Sholmes' observations and deductions are sometimes a little too sharp. He has a tendency to hit the nail on the side of the head and drive it in at an obtuse angle. When he does that, he, it fails. It falls to us to straighten things out. Alright then, let's see what we can do. Yes, we must pick out the keywords in Mr. Sholmes' quite brilliant deductions, and discreetly exchange them for something that makes a little more sense. If we can do that... I'm sure we'll arrive at what Mr. Sholmes meant to say in the first place. In that case, are you ready for the second performance of the day? Once again, my dear fellows, for your continued delight and wonder, let the curtain rise for Herlock Sholmes's Logic and Reasoning Spectacular, Act 1. Let's do it. Careful observation of the victim reveals to us the events that transpired in the disconsolate room last night. Foam at the mouth of the deceased clearly indicates the use of poison. So how do we correct it? I think we just go through this maybe.
Here we go. Well, you can't deny that a fork implies the man was eating something or about to eat something. Yes, that's true. If it were... If I were to decide to eat some soap, I should prefer to use a fork than an attempt to use it to eat. Then to attempt it with chopsticks. And of course, only half the bar of soap is left on the plate. But might there be some other explanation? Some, some, something material that pr proves whether or not the man actually really ate some soap. Mm -hmm. Aha! Look, there's more soap on the floor here. Mr. Shamspear really have must have really loved this stuff. Let's not jump to conclusions, Mr. Narahodo. Look closely at the soap. Do you see that it would fit together perfectly with the half bar on the table? What the? How can that be? I think that they are two halves of the same bar that broke apart. Yeah, alright. He didn't eat it because there's a full soap. Take that. that the man was about to eat it? Of course. The other piece of the other piece of soap reveals the answer. It being the other half of the soap on the table. In short, the victim was not eating soap at all. But it's obvious, really, for no depths of hunger could drive a man to attempt to eat soap. Even I, with my unquenchable thirst for practical knowledge, took only a single bite. <laughs> just a taste, just a little taste. But that begs the question of how the man was poisoned, because there's no sign of any food on the table. An excellent observation, Mr. Narahodo. One that furnishes us with the answer we seek. For well, London's Faust. Oh yeah, we can skip through this part until it, until it tells us. Here we go. Contents on the plate. Mr. Sherms is still pushing the soap argument then. Perhaps he's suggesting the man licked the soap rather than ate it? If soap in London is that poisonous, I don't think I want to be washing my hands with it. But there are no signs of any food in this room at all. Of course, food isn't the only thing that passes people's lips, is it? It will be... The cup. I thought it might be like spilt stuff, but yeah, the cup. Take that! Take that! It's safe to say Sherms would apply that you can drink lava but only once literally. <laughs> yes, the victim's life was claimed by poison that tainted the teacup. Indeed, cups have been the vessel of choice for practicing poisoners over the centuries. And it would appear that this victim drank every last drop. There's no sign of fruit anywhere in the room. Which leads us to the immutable conclusion. The cause of death was clearly intoxication due to the ingestion of poison contained in this teacup. Yay! The cause of death identified... Oh yeah, we can skip through this. This part is so weird to do on stream, because like it repeats so much. I think it'd be like less annoying if you were just playing it yourself. Because otherwise you start repeating things and... Here we go. Ah, the western vessel for infused hot drinks again. It's It's already featured heavily in our deduction so far. Yes, we can imagine that shortly before his death, Mr. Shamspear was having a nice drink of tea. There would be nothing remarkable about that, but what troubles me is Mr. Natsume's reaction when he heard Mr. Shams suggest it. There's more to this seduction than it seems. We must closely examine the scene of the crime again for more clues. Oh my god, there's a second one! There's two of them. It's a teacup. And it too is empty. Given that he's actually holding this one in his hand, 
we can assume this is the cup from which Mr. Shamspear was actually drinking. Yeah, hearing things again help, but we literally just read it out like a minute ago. <laughs> this changes everything. Everything reduced up to now is now turned on its head. I have a bad feeling about this. I almost don't want to say it. Yes, I know exactly how you feel. All right. Take that! Oh, the teacup. Did the man die, dine and die alone? This other teacup suggests the answer. Yes, so there were two teacups in this room all along. In other words, this is a strong indication that the, that the victim's last supper. There was a guest present. At the very least, we could say now with certainty <sighs> that someone else was here in the room last night, taking tea with the victim. Whoa, what are you talking about? Utterly unbelievable, unjustly unreasonable. To draw a conclusion in such a such meager evidence would be foolish, however, certainly. In which case, what more can we deduce about this possible guest at the table? Well, allow me to lift the veil of doubt, my dear fellow. Do you mean to say you know exactly who was in this room the whole time? A room at the time of the victim's death? The broken lock. Alright. I'm not sure I like where this deduction is going now. I'm afraid it's too late to go back to the hal Halkin days of eating too much soap. But the identify of the identity of the guest who was here last night when the victim passed away is is something I have a very bad feeling about. Well, you can and try to ignore your feelings, but we cannot ignore the truth, Miss Sinarado. No, I suppose not. Time to look around again. It's empty. Empty of liquid, but full of air. Makes you think, doesn't it? Makes me think that you're full of hot air. We should be thinking about who else was in the room at the time. Ah, Susita's son quip in response was cleverer than my original riddle. Ah. Okay, whose glasses are these? Oh, I can't even look at them. Alright, who who was here? It seems that the only thing is in this room with a makeshift stage and the costumes. I overlooked these three books initially. I wonder what they are. Let's see. The titles read... The picture of Monsieur... Lecoq? Holy cock! <laughs> Wait, I'm sure I've heard those titles before. It could just be an incredible coincidence, but they're the exact same three books that Mr. Natsume purchased the other day. Oh, I'd forgotten that. I'd forgotten that. That was from the last game. Oh my god. Now, those three titles are here in the room with, of the victim. Yet Mr. Natsume claims never had to have been here before. Lecoq? <laughs> I can't say that. I'm gonna say that. <laughs> oh no. Pile of familiar books. No! Oh, Natsume, why? Indeed, what reveals the answer, of course, is the pile of familiar books. Quite so, it's no mere coincidence that these three titles are here in this room. It's the link to the truth. Oh, Mr. Natsume, you purchased these books four days ago at a second-hand bookshop. Uh, that's just a, a coincidence. In that case, you will be able to bring the same three titles from your room, will you not? This very moment. 
Oh. Is it a Sentai manga collection? <laughs> no, never. Non-negotiable. If you can't bring your own copies here, it proves that these books are in fact yours. No. Oh. Having purchased these books four days ago and returned to your lodgings, you were arrested the very next day. So you could conceivably have brought the books here on that evening, but you never mentioned that. In other words, you could have had brought these books, these three books here to the victim's room. <laughs> That's how he walks. <laughs> Last night, having returned to your lodgings after the trial conducted in, at the Old Bailey. Oh. Oh no. In short, there's only one possible conclusion. The victim died here in this room last night as a result of poisoning. And that same night, the victim had a visitor. And that visitor... I fucking love Shomes, look at him, he's like, breaking the third wall here, he's like, hey. Hey, what's up? Welcome to the Taximals world where you don't have to worry about taxes and taxis are always available. <laughs> that, that, look, not having to worry about taxes is a dream. <laughs> How are you doing, Ultimate Evil? Oh, no, not, not Natsume. Not Soseki-san. Thus concludes the final act of Hell Extremes' great deduction. No. I feel so bad for him. Like I know he's going to be fine because he like this is a flashback and he ended up in Japan again, but like uh, uh I feel so bad for him. Not again, not again, not again. Not again. Well then, Mr. Natsume. It would appear you're going to have to accompany me down to the yard. Oh, he just got out. But, 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 but wait. Hold your horses. Yes. Door, key, locked, entry, exit, entirely impossible. He's so flustered. He's, e he's being even stranger than normal. What, you think that's an alibi? You could have just made a copy. What? You live in the same building, after all. You've had plenty of opportunity, I'm sure. But, 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 but... Misery me. Sorry, sir. You'll get your chance to give your side of the story later. The facts speaks for themselves, Mr. Mustache. Ah, uh, you, you, you horrible Herlock Sholmes. He really has found himself an arch-rival now, hasn't he? Come on now, no dilly-dallying. No dilly Outside, there's a carriage waiting. Low come student, Mr. Narahoto Esquire. I... I never imagined I'd be in this position again, but... You have to help me, please, please. I'm innocent. Alright, I understand. We'll come to your soul later and talk about it. And one more thing. Oh, yes? My... My poor little kitty cat. Please give him his breakfast for me. Oh. Oh. You lurk for a bit. Have to get some stuff ready for work this afternoon. That's all good. Thanks for thanks for lurking. Enjoy the game. Thank you. And so, his evil curse still apparently unbroken. Soseki san found himself once again the prime suspect in a case of murder. Thanks to the incriminating deduction of the great detective. My dear fellow, that honour belongs to you. If we had just ignored it and said, yes, he, he ate the soap and died, it would be perfect and we wouldn't have to arrest Soseki-san. Well, at least that means Inspector Gregson is no longer here. 
We can examine the crime scene in more detail now. Yes, that's right. Ah, oh, and of course. What? Have you forgotten what the inspector mentioned before? It was the landlord, Mr. Garadeb, who discovered Mr. Shamspear. Ah, oh, Mr. John Garadeb, yes. I expect we could find him in his sitting room on the top floor, as usual. Right, we must remember and go talk to him later, then. As we've seen from the outside, the window is completely bricked up. A vestige of the former window tax that Britons had to pay. What a strange thing they used to tax in Great Britain. Yeah, window tax! <laughs> I mean, t making poor people pay for the number of windows they had in a property. It's extraordinary. Not the window tax. It's heartbreaking to think of the, of the poor people having to block up their windows just to avoid an un unaffordable tax. Oh. What is it, Miss Susato? If you look closely, a number of bricks are loose. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, soap! It looks as though an amateur has broken out a few of... Of them just here. Was it Mr. Shamspear who did it, I wonder? Being the lodger renting his room. Ah, oh, look at this, Mr. Narahodo. On the outside, there's a little ledge, and there's something on it. What outside? Soaps. Show me. It's so cold outside. You can feel it through. You can feel it through this gap. It did snow all last night. It would be cold. But more importantly, what is on the ledge out there? What are those snow-covered lumps? It's more bars of soap. Soap? What are bars of soap doing lined up on the ledge outside the window? I... I have no idea. But the pair of them look rather charming like that. Still, that's very strange, isn't it? Bars of soap lined outside the window? I think perhaps we should take one. There are two after all. Oh dear, I... I suppose we could. Oh, what's this? Look here at the soap. Do you see in the middle there? It's a patch that's a different colour. It's it's sort of transparent, but some sort of fancy design, I suppose. Only in Great Britain. It looks like the Hinomaru flag of Japan, doesn't it? How wonderful. It's probably a very expensive brand. Expensive? Then what's it doing in the ramshackled old in this ramshackled old, old room? A cheap bar of soap that was discovered just outside Mr. Shamsby's window. It's one of two that were found there. They just said it was expensive looking and then the court record says it's cheap. Look at these extravagant bright costumes. Somehow they look out of place in this room with its groom shady going on goings on. This one looks like a king's attire. A king? I've always dreamt of being a king. Oh, I think you'd be more suited to a feudal lord. Uh, daimyo? Dime or such like? The chonmage top knot? Every Japanese man wishes he had a chonmage. Oh, you look wonderful with one, and you, you already have the sword. Can you imagine what would happen if I walked around the streets of London with a chonmage and a sword? Oh, the poor man, so young to die. Do you suppose it was a very painful death, being poisoned as he was? I don't know. All we can do now is hope that he'll be reborn to a better life. Yes, I suppose you're right. I wonder. Do you think that putting our hands together in a Japanese prayer will help a British soul? Sorry? I made sure I had a reference at the ready for just such an occasion as this, actually. <clears throat> this book is entitled The Beginner's Guide to Praying for the Departed the British Way. I'll just reread it now, one moment. There's quite a spine on that book, isn't there? And here we have another dispor disproportionately large machine. This looks like a meter of some kind. 
Ah, this is a gas meter, I think. It seems that in this district, residents pay for gas as they use it with coins. Ah, I see. Yes, now you've pointed it out. I can see that there's a slot here that looks like it would take a coin. So you mean if you put a coin in here? That's right. That would buy you about two hours of gas for lights and heating. So if you were a poor person with no money, you'd have to sleep in the freezing cold? Yes, or if you're a scatterbrain with no change because you forgot to exchange your money at the bank. Thank goodness there's no meter in our office. This is a large gas wall light, isn't it? It must be connected to a gas pipe on the wall. Gas lights, a gas stove. London really is a city of gas. That and all the, the beans they eat. But now that I think about it, Mr. and Mrs. Garadeb had an open fire on the top floor, didn't they? Oh yes, you're right. I don't recall seeing a gas stove up there. Well, I much prefer a real fire anyway. It's so much cozier. <laughs> they eaten beans and slapsod. Slapsod eaten beans. There's not much on these shelves, is there? Just this wine glass and bottle. Both of them are cracked. Yes, not much use, are they? <laughs> What's the matter? Alright, I was just reminded of the Reaper, that's all. Prosecutor Lord Van Zix. Yes, he's so reckless with his wine glasses. I was thinking it's a waste, that he should donate some to the needy. You can suggest it next time we meet. What is this? What is this, exactly? Looks like part of an envelope, I think. Yes, I think you might be right. Perhaps it was torn off when the letter was opened. Is that significant? Well, it's a little out of place, perhaps, when you look around the room. There's no sign of a letter, or the rest of the envelope, in fact, is there? Ah, oh, she's right. And yet, here we have the torn off end of an envelope. Just strikes me as unusual. God, I wish I could stop yawning. Why do I always yawn when I talk? I agree, we better take this, just in case. <laughs> this is some sort of makeshift stage, I think, isn't it? Where does the audience sit, though, for the nightly shakes... For the nightly Shakespeare performances. Actors aspiring to the great stage must practice their art, Mr. Narahodo, with or without an audience. In fact, on a related note, perhaps you should set up a mock bench in the defense for the defense in your office. What? Then you could practice your art every single day. I'll think about it, if you promise to don a beard and play the role of the judge. Well, if, if that would help you achieve your goal, this I have to see. I would like to see it as well. I would like to see it. <laughs> ah, one of the teacups Mr. Shamspear and his guests drank from last night. But don't go drinking from them, Mr. Narahodo. There's bit of poison inside. I'm not planning on drinking any, don't worry. Anyway, the cups are both empty. That's true. So, one was Mr. Shamspear's, and the other must be the cup of Mr. of that Mr. Natsume. The cup that Mr. Natsume was drinking from. But Soseki-san wasn't poisoned, of course. Perhaps we should take these so we can examine them in more detail later. Pair of teacups. One with the green line around the rim, rim was Mr. Natsume's. I think that's everything. Looks like you're having a good snoop around, eh? Inspector Gregson, back so soon? After I threw that little Japanese fella in the clink, I went and reported this to the investigation division. In five minutes time, this place will be cordoned off by the yard. Oh, I see. Well, we better be leaving then. 
We literally took things from the crime scene. <laughs> Why is Ace Attorney like this? Poor well, Mr. Natsume must have been feeling very low being back in the cell again so soon. Uh, what? What's wrong, Mr. Narahodo? Are you good, my fellow? Out, out, brief candle. Life is but a walking shadow. A poor, a poor player. That struts and frets his hour upon the stage and then is heard no more. Hello? Now, how soundeth the next part? It is a tale told by an idiot full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. Indeed, oh happy day. <laughs> He's dead again. Uh, what, uh, what, 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 what? Walking dead? But the fella isn't dead at all? What was that nonsense he was saying, though? I think, yes, it was from William Shakespeare's Macbeth. A soliloquy from Act 5, Scene 5. Shakespeare. So it was that the victim, Mr. William Shakespeare, came back to life. The man had indeed been poisoned. It transpired that it transpired that it hadn't killed him. He was taken by emergency carriage to the nearby hospital for treatment, and Inspector Gregson evicted us from the scene of the crime, whatever that now was. Wow. So there's been a stabbing victim that didn't die and a poison victim that didn't die. That's so cool. Whatever do you think will happen now? Good question. What a strange situation for Mr. Natsume, arrested for murder, but then the victim comes back to life. I think perhaps the victim was never dead in the first place. It seems very likely that Mr. Shamspear did costume, did consume poison as we deducted. Or deduced. I don't know what it said. But it was an accident attempted, but was it an accident attempted suicide or attempted murder? Until the truth can be established, I imagine the police will keep Mr. Natsume in custody. I suppose so. Let's hope it doesn't come to anything more than a night in the cells. Oh, what is- what's this? Who are you? What's this man doing over here- over there? Looks like he's trying to see into Suseki-san's lodgings. Is something wrong, Mr. Naruhodo? Um, excuse me, could I have a word? <laughs> Goodbye. He just ran off. I feel... I feel sure that we've seen that man somewhere before. Where was it? Hmm, I do too, but I don't remember. With the exception of the top floor where Mr. and Mrs. Garadeb live, the windows are all bricked up. Yes, that's because of an old window tax that was charged on a number of windows the a property had. In order to pay less tax, the poorer members of society filled many of their windows. The tax has since been abolished, hasn't it? So the windows could be opened up again, surely. Unfortunately, it would appear that the residents of this district can't afford to pay to have the work done. Yes, that's a sad state of affairs. Especially for people like poor Mr. Natsume, who have to live all cooped up in a windowless room. I suppose that's the price you pay for living in a very cheap accommodation. It all seems rather pointless when you put it like that. Theory. Theory, theory. The guy wasn't poisoned 
in the teacup or anything. He was poisoned because his room was fucking closed up and the gas meter is connected to his room and there was a gas leak and that's why he is unconscious. It's and also speaking fucking gibberish because carbon monoxide poisoning. That's my theory. There was no, there was no, um, and he went to eat soap because he thought it was food because he was delirious from carbon monoxide poisoning. Very good. There always seems to be a bicycle outside the Garada residence. I read that bicycles are extremely popular all over Great Britain at the moment. In fact, that one seems very warped though, especially the front wheel. Is that to make it more of a challenge to ride, do you think? No, I'm afraid that may be a result of the rider's incompetence. For the front wheel to be so badly warped, I'm afraid the rider must have been similar, similar, similarly effect, affected. Oh my god, I can't fucking speak today. Yeah, there's a good chance Mr. Natsume has been practicing on this bicycle, I think. Oh dear, I fear you may be right. London's blanketed in fog again today. The sky is covered in cloud. But if you look carefully in the distance, you can just make out the Crystal Tower being built. Ah, the Crystal Tower, yes. The centerpiece of the Great Britain's exhibition that's open in six months' time. <gasps> Are we gonna finally see it? Are we gonna see it? Because they kept on um, talking about it last game. Everyone's talking about the Great Exhibition of London at the moment, it seems. Well, it's to be the largest event of its kind anywhere in the world, with technology and scientists from all over. I can't wait for it for myself. Do you think visiting students from the Far East like us will be granted entry? The last great exhibition that was held in London had more than 6 million visitors, it seems. And this time, the British are determined to make it an even bigger success, to outdo the Paris Exposition. I see, that's an incredible number of people. And with so many people expected to attend, we should easily be able to slip in unnoticed. There's always an honest approach to buying tickets at the main entrance, Mr. Naruhodo. He wants to get in on him, like, without paying. Naughty boy. Why has somebody built this snowman on some sort of pedestal, do you think? That's not a pedestal, Mr. Naruhodo. That's part of the snowman's body. Really? But it already has a perfectly good body. Well, it's true that British snowmen are usually made with two balls of snow. Perhaps this is a foreigner. Now we're looking at him if he's strange. Poor man, I know how he feels. If anything, it's Japanese and British who two ball snowmen that are strange ones, isn't it? After all, real people do have three sections, head, torso, and legs. Do you ever think that perhaps you think about things too much? I think he looks good. I think he's a good looking snowman. Um, alright, I don't think there's anything else to look at, unless we can- Nah, can't look there. Nah, nah. Oh, we can look at the door. The Garadab household and Mr. Natsume's lodgings are in a prominent position here on the corner. Sometimes when I look at the building, I can't help feeling that it's a bit of a- that it's a bit of a slant. Does it, it does rather look like it would collapse even if the sm even in the smallest earthquake, doesn't it? And isn't it supposed to be haunted as well? I think I might have a hunch as to why Saseki-san has- Oh my god! Oh my god, James Necker! Necker Raid, hey Sonneveld! Hello! Ultima Underworld 2, Labyrinth of Worlds. Wow! Thank you, thank you for the raid! Thank you so much! How you doing, James Necker? Necker raid! Oh my god, the bongo cat and the bongo taxi? I love that. Oh my god, how was I not following you? I have now fixed that. You are sleepy and cold? It's cold here as well! I'm thinking about putting some socks on because my toes are cold even though they're under a blankie. But yeah, how was your stream? What what did you get up to? Oops. We are playing Ace Attorney. We're playing the second 
great Ace Attorney game. Yeah, honestly, I think I might find some socks. Do I have any in here? Let me get them. I found some socks. Dungeon crawling and stuff? That's fun. I love a good dungeon crawl. Speaking of dungeon crawling, is anyone gonna get Diablo? That comes out, like, this year. I feel like I've heard nothing about it. Even though I'm pretty sure they did, like, the... the beta and stuff like that. Which would have been like a like a chapter or so. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I feel like I feel like I haven't heard enough about it yet. To be sold on anything. There was a beta. People were saying it looks good. I've heard nothing. I was thinking about it the other day, going, hmm, Diablo, I don't know, maybe. But I've, I've seen nothing. I might wait till it comes out fully. But I do do get the the do get the, the little 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 itches for doing some dungeon crawling. <laughs> Maybe. Hey Carl Fishy. Looks good, but everyone's so burnt on that blizzard. We don't want to get our hopes up. That's true. That's true. I don't know. I, I don't know. Yeah, like I, I feel like they're gonna they're gonna ruin it. <laughs> we'll see. I'll I'll see what people say when it's actually out. Cause it is it out in June? Is that when it's coming? Like it sounds very soon. The laps on. <laughs> The whole season pass in a full price game thing can shove it. Yeah, yeah, fuck that, actually. I hate that. But yeah, thank you, James Necro, for the raid. I should I should introduce myself for people who have not been here before. Um, but I'm Taxi, I'm an undead cat girl VTuber. I like to play a variety of games. I love puzzle games. And, and my favorite game is Ace Attorney, and we're playing that right now. <laughs> but yeah, thank you so much for the raid, I appreciate it. Hi, Lapsod. Alrighty, can we move anywhere? Move. Ooh, new location. Where are we going? I think we sh Ooh, okay. Oh, there's a lot to do. Narahodo's legal consult consultancy. Let's have a look at our office. You know, you can always write into your Aussie friends the nap. <laughs> Please have a nap if you need one. Oh, this is before we've, um, set it up. Hey. Woo, nap time. Exactly. What to do? Gonna nap so hard? Hell yeah. My naps lately have turned into, like, three-hour naps, and it's been awful. <laughs> Suddenly my whole day is gone. So Seki-san is terribly unlucky, isn't he? You can say that again. Suspected of two different murders in two days. I've never known anybody to be so badly in the wrong place at the wrong time so many times. I have. And I'm not- and I'm looking at him right now. Poppy your cat already vanished from the cat cam. You think she's in bed? Oh. My cat's on my bed at the moment. Now that it's gotten cooler, I think she likes, um, 
cuddling up in the doona. You know, I hadn't really considered it much before, but I think you might be right. I've been quite unlucky in that respect, haven't I? Am I... Uh, am, am I cursed? Oh no, narrowed son. I'm sure you're overthinking it. We're cursed. We're cursed. She's writing. I don't think I've had a look at her side of the room yet. If I've remembered correctly, this large and imposing lump of iron is called a typewriter. To think that every single one of the adventures of Sherlock Holmes blossomed from this very machine. Ah, uh, it's such a dreamy thought. I actually had to go to this. I actually had to go on it the other day. The metal bars that move when you hit the keys got all tangled up somehow, and that made Iris angry. Mr. Narahodo, you're ruining my dreamy thoughts. Please don't do that again. Ugh, now I've made Susita son angry as well. Aww. Um, Iris. That's incredible concentration, that is. I find it quite remarkable how she can focus on so many different things at once. Perhaps I should try drinking more herbal tea. The blend third from the right would be good for you, Runo. Oh, um, Iris? This girl is destined for great things, I'm sure. The blend third from the right. That's a charming little white shelf. It's full of charming little bottles, too. Yes, but don't touch any of those. They might explode. Ah, a charming shelf full of charming bottles. Full of charring ingredients. <laughs> you know, Holly mistakenly drank one of them the other day. What? And how? I think he was lucky though. He hasn't exploded yet. Chemistry can be very can be a very hazardous occupation. It's living with Mr. Sholmes that's the hazardous occupation, if you ask me. So he literally just eats anything. He's he's the, he's the kid that's eating crayons and glue at the back of the class. Ah oh yes, this is where you take down note ideas, isn't it, Iris? So, what's on the blackboard today? Buck up, Bruno. What's this? Oh, I'm just playing around with ideas for the title of next month's installment. Another idea I had was the barrel co co coronet. I'm really torn about which one to use. What do you think, Runer? Anything but buck up Runer, obviously. Hmm, I suppose you're right. I'll tell you what, I'll surprise you with it. You'll have to wait until next month and see. Ah, so many sleepless nights. strikes me is how pretty and neatly arranged this tea set is. It's my favourite one. In fact, I think it's high time for an afternoon tea. Wait there, I'll fetch a special blend that I've prepared for today. Oh, Iris, you do love your tea, don't you? She looks so happy in the prospect. And after you've drunk it, I'll collect some experimental data, if that's alright. So what is she about to make me drink? That's a concern. I feel like we don't need to inspect everything here. I want to know about this though. This enormous machine that takes up the entire desk, doesn't it? It's really very imposing. Ah, uh, Hurley's great analytoscope. Al al an Anally. <laughs> analytoscope? Yes, I can analyze anything with it, you know? But I've never seen anyone actually using it. Well, it's his invention, so I don't know how to operate it. Why don't you get it to analyze your own operation? Its own operation, then. Oh, Runo, you're razor sharp today, aren't you? Mm. 
All right. All right. <laughs> well, she left her bag there. This looks like that treatment notes for whoever's occupying this bed. Let's see. Do not permit to run around the hospital. The patient doesn't seem to be here at the moment, so... He or she is probably running around the hospital then. Oh dear, how worrying. What's worrying is why they haven't discharged the patient yet. There are all sorts of medicines in this cabinet, look. I'm not sure if it's safe leaving them in reach of everyone like this. Yes, you're right. I can imagine if you were peckish, you might try a whole bottle or two. Well, at least there seems to be a little lock to secure the cabinet doors. I don't imagine that would stop you if you were hungry. I worry that you'd break the lock. Hunger does turn me into criminal, you know, Miss Susita. Pretty sure her lock would eat them. We've, it's been well established now. I want to know what's on that painting. again, the eccentric landlord's eccentric top floor abode. We're here because Mr. Garadab's the, uh, the one who discovered the incident this morning, don't forget. Ah, uh, you chaps, eh? Yes, good morning, sir. Thank you for your cooperation in court yesterday. It was quite a trial. As much for Mr. Garadab as anyone else, really. Came straight back here after all that business at the Bailey yesterday. Didn't expect to wake up to more belly nonsense this morning. I wonder if you wouldn't mind telling us exactly what happened, Mr. Garadab. Yes, I suppose you'd like to know all about that dead loss of an actor chap in the ground floor room. Those were exactly Inspector Gregson's words, weren't they? It must have been a real shock for you this morning. I hear that you discovered what had happened. Ah, uh, well, that hopeless actor chap rises at 4 o'clock sharp every morning without fail. But at 5.30 in the morning, he still hadn't lit the gas. So I went down and knocked on his door, but no bally answer. And that's when you broke into his room by kicking down the door. I feel like I gave him a different voice last time, I, like when I played the first game of this, and I can't remember what it was. <laughs> well, I caught on that. I don't know, like, did I give him something more fancy? I, I don't know, I don't know. Well, I called on that rum looking Japanese chap to do the grunt work, of course. Wasn't it a little premature to kick the door down? That man could have just overslept by half an hour. That's very true, Mr. Narahodo. If 30 minutes oversleeping warranted such behaviour. I'd have to kick your down, e door down every morning. Well, um, you know, better to be safe than sorry and all that. It's just me, or is he avoiding our gaze now all of a sudden? Except that it was a sorry situation indeed that you found on the far side of the door. The victim's name is Mr. Shamspear, I believe, is that right? Yes, William Shamspear. Took the ground floor room three months ago now. And how would you describe him? In a word, destitute. Destitute? Well, let's face it, the only remaining feature of that room is, is the cheap rent. Redeeming feature. Anyone wanting to live in a place like that is either broke or has, bel has a belly screw loose. So hard to choose which category Saseki-san would fall into. 
Mr. Narahodo, that's a little rude. How did she read his mind? He was doing research as well. Research? Into what? Shakespeare, of course. Shakespeare. Read a few plays of the old bard myself, you know. Romeo and Hamlet and all that. Yes, William Shakespeare is England's most highly regarded classical playwright and author. He's known as Sao in Japanese, as you know, and many of his works have already been translated. Is he? Sao. It seems incredible that Shakespeare was shortened to Sao, though. Someone was too heavy-handed there. There are a lot of costumes in the victim's room, actually, weren't there? Of course, Mr. Natsume is a scholar of English literature as well. I imagine he and Mr. Shamsuya would have had much in common. Shakespeare interpreta interpretation disagreement leads to shocking murder. Let's hope it's not that. Mr. Narahodo, really? How rude. How does she hear him? After Mr. Natsume's trial yesterday, you came straight back here, I believe, didn't you? Did you notice anything strange between then and this morning? Well now, must have been about six in the evening by the time I got home. Snow was coming down rather heavily as I remembered, and it was completely dark nearby. That failed actor chap was out at the time. Mr. Garadab noticed there was no light from his room or something, I suppose. Couldn't summon the energy for anything much, so I just sat in front of the fire up here. It was, rather, it was after 8 before Shamsphere got back. The chap was up till past 1 in the morning, I'll have you know. Suppose he met his end sometime after that. I was asleep by then, so I'm rather in the dark here, there. Well, thank you. That was very, very illuminating. Is everything alright, Mr. Sato? Well, I was just thinking, it's a little strange, that's all. Mr. Garadeb, you're up here in your room all evening, if I've understood correctly. Not a big fan of stairs, not with this blasted leg. Then, how is it that you seem to know? The precise movements of your tenant on the ground floor, I mean. Ah! That's a very good point. I can't imagine that you would hear noises from the ground floor all the way up here. Does this old man like to spy on his talent ten tenants? Is that it? I say, I know what you're thinking. It's a bally outrage. Ex -mil I'm ex-military, you know. Did you know? I don't go around spying on my tenants. Why would I? Then how did you know, Mr. Garadab? It's the gas, woman. The gas tells me everything. The, the gas? What on earth do you mean, sir? How can the gas tell you anything, let alone everything? Well, as you're probably aware, the gas is supplied to the building by pipes. Yes, I'd more or less worked that out. Every room in the building is connected by a single pipe to the gas main outside. And the gas company supplies gas to properties via the main. Yes, I understand that too. Let me see if I can just can explain. Let's say I was to light the gas lamps up here. What do you suppose would happen? Well, obviously the room would get brighter. Exactly. But at the same time, the lights in all the other rooms of the house would dim for a moment. What? They dim? Why? Perhaps it's because when you light a gas lamp, it briefly uses more gas than usual. And that reduces the amount of gas in the pipe for the other lamps that it's connected to it. That might explain why the other lamps dim momentarily, mightn't it? Yes, of course, because everything's connected to a single supply pipe. Is that supposed to happen, though? It sounds rather undesirable. Jolly good point. Fact is, the gas company's pipes in these parts are pretty hopeless, long worn out. And barely got any gas in them to start with. Opposite's also true, of course, extinguishing the lamps up here, and they grow brighter in the rest of the house. Ah, right, I see. So by watching the flickering of the lamps in one room, you can determine what's happening elsewhere. You got it. 
Oh, of course, because when people come back home in the evening and before they go to sleep at night, what they're guaranteed to do is either light or put out their lamps and fires. Clever. Important fact, the room on the ground floor and the one above it use slightly different amounts of gas. By watching the lights in here closely, I can work out almost exactly what's going on in the whole house. Gosh, that's fascinating, Mr. Garadab. Absolutely fascinating. Well, nothing to it, really. And I can't really see what's going... Uh, and I can't really see that's going to help us with the case either. What I'd like to know is why Mr. Garadab is so invested in what his tenants are up to in the first place. I feel like there's more to it than idle curiosity. Well, we've done as much investigating here as we can, I think. Perhaps we ought to go to the prison and speak with Mr. Natsume again. Good idea. Mr. Natsume. Oh. Look, Mr. Naruhodo. Mr. Natsume, have the police finished questioning you now? Look, I'm student, Mr. Naruhodo Esquire. Oh, yes? What is he? Tell me, is he a ghost? Is he here to haunt me? Let me guess. You're talking about Mr. Sholmes. He actually calls himself a great detective, Mr. Natsume, not a ghost. But, but with his diabolic de deductions, they're not of this world. They're, they're, they've left me. Ah, cursed. I'm cursed, I tell you. Well, that sort of hurts. I don't where credit is due, Mr. Narahodo. You were heavily involved in the deduction, too. Yes, um, moving on. We have some wonderful news. Oh? The victim that we all thought was dead has come back to life again. Now, in the absolute worst case, you could only be t tried for attempted murder. That's great, isn't it, Mr. Natsume? It's terrible! Oh. I'm stuck in the cell suffering for some silly wrong end of the stick. You did it, didn't you? Confess, you're a killer. Why the moustache? Constant questions. I'm sorry to hear that. Ah, oh, that selfish shyster. Make up your mind. Are you dead or alive? If you were going to come back to life, why bother dying? Wickedly wishy-washy William. Well, it seems likely that Mr. Shamspear was never actually dead in the first place. Ah yes, that might make sense. And I'm pleased that he's alive, of course. Our lively debate last night was much fun. It'd be sad if he was if it was our last. Oh. Oops. I feel strongly that the sentence for attempted murder shouldn't be that different from actually succeeded in murder. You shouldn't get off lightly just because you you lucked out. Yeah. True. I I don't like I don't know um I don't know how lower of a sentence they are though. Um Mr. Natsume, does this mean that you did see the victim last night? You met with Mr. Shamspear, didn't you? I'm not saying another word. I demand to have a lawyer present. Who do you think I am? Please, Mr. Natsume, we need to hear your side of the story. You tried, but you sucked and failed. <laughs> uh, why am I cursed like this? Can you actually tell us exactly what happened last night then, Mr. Natsume? There's nothing to tell, but Mr. Narahodo Esquire, I'm eternally grateful for you, to you for helping me with that accused case, ne accursed case next today. Ne next today. Yesterday. <laughs> oh my god, I can't speak. 
a case that saw poor Miss Green hospitalised after she ended up with a knife in her back. It's hard to believe that it was only yesterday. After the trial was over, I trudged my weary way back to my lowly lodgings. And that evening, at past nine, it must have been, I visited Mr. Shamspear. So you did go to the victim's room then. As we feared. I didn't do anything wrong. I'd never been to his room before. It was the first time. Then what made you decide to go? I bumped into him when I arrived back in the house. We got chatting and it, and it developed into a discussion. But he had to go out, so I bade him farewell. That ties in with Mr. Ga what Mr. Garadev said, that the victim went out and came back after eight. We met again after that in the evening, and some and around nine or just after, when I took him, when I took him some nice tea, I brewed as a gift. So it was you who brought the tea that had clearly been drunk at the scene then. And I suppose you were discussing the works of Shakespeare, weren't you? Yes, that's right. That's exactly right. Romeo and Juliet. Who was the stronger? It was a delightful deba debate. I'm sure. Such a stimulating subject, Shakespeare. And the debate became very heated, so you slipped poison in Mr. Shamspear's tea? No, never. Not at all. Team Juliet won. That was me, and when I left his room... The flamboyant fellow was fighting fit, I swear it. Cat categorically? Mr. Natsume, you often say the same thing about yourself, I've noticed. That you have a curse a cursed existence. I'm sure I've mentioned this to you before, but I've been here in Great Britain for a year now, and in that time I've learnt that it's no place for me. It can be very trying to, to live in a foreign land and adapt to another and ways of another culture. There are foreigners everywhere I look. They all stare at me, they all laugh. It's the impression I get whenever I go out. It makes me scared to leave my room. Which is why I've become a recluse. But even in my room I find no respite from my fears. I've moved more times than I can remember, and then one week ago I moved into Briar Road. But why? I mean, why did you choose that place? It doesn't seem very comfortable. Because the rent is cheap. I have so little money, it's broke to me. The rent? Obviously there's a reason why it's cheap. Because the room is cursed. Cursed? Cursed how? The previous occupant, the man who lived there before me, I t before I took the room, died there. Oh no. He was only a young man, but one morning he was found dead and no one could explain why. Surely no one would want to live in a room with a history like that. They're all getting fucking carbon monoxide poisoning. That's- that's my- that's my- That's what I'm guessing. I didn't. When the letting agent recommended the place, I wavered. But I want books, books, and books cost money. A horrible history is a small price to pay. When I realized it would, it, it would mean I could buy more books, I signed the lease like lightning. Brave or blinkered? After I moved in, I soon came to realize what I'd done. I, I realized how horrible that room is. The room's history really was. Gosh, was it really so awful? How did the room's horrible history affect you, Mr. Natsume? What happened? At first, I was just feeling... The feeling of beady eyes boring in my back watching me. Do you think that might have just been your mind playing tricks on you? You'd be 900 a week in Oz. <laughs> no windows. <laughs> no, no, my mind doesn't know any tricks. It was someone else. It's been a, a long nightmare ever since I was g given keys to the place. A nightmare? You've been having bad dreams, you mean? All, all the souls who, who've died in that room uh, uh, lean over me in my sleep and try to strangle me. It really is horrible. 
And now I come to think of it, it happened again last night too. The very same night that Mr. Shamspear was writhing in, in ag writhing in agony from the poison in his body. I was on the verge of being suffocated silently by those miserable spirits in my room. You simply must move out of that room as soon as possible. Yes, you're right, I know it, and that's why. I'm already searching for the next room of, with a history to call home. I think perhaps you should try and avoid accommodation with any kind of history at all. Otherwise, I'm scared you might... I'm scared that you yourself might become history. No windows, no doors, no floors, no running water, or an, an men, amenities. 600 a week. Exactly. Ew, Sister Tess son knows how to make the man listen. I'm convinced. I'm convinced it's carbon monoxide poisoning from the gas. Because there's no windows. Seki san is going fucking delirious at night. The other guy was poisoned, and someone else died in his room. It's just unfortunate living situation that's literally killing them. Of course, my Lord of the Mayor is worried about the curse on my room as well. You mean Garadeb? That's why you have windows, though. Yes, he knows that if people keep dying there, he'll never be able to rent out again. Well, that's true. I, for one, wouldn't go near the place. Ah, perhaps... That may explain why the landlord pays so much attention to the gas lamps and his tenants' movements. You mean because he's worried about their well-being? He does seem to have an unusually keen interest in the amount of gas in the pipes. That must be the reason why he keeps such a close tabs on the occupants who, of his let rooms. You don't open them, it's cold outside, then you should get a carbon monoxide meter. What do you mean he pays so much attention? Pays so much attention to the gas lamps. Oh dear, no, it's nothing to do with you, Mister Natsume. Please forget, forget what I said. Anything? Oh, now you're talking about me behind my back as well. What's important is mis that Mister Shamspear isn't, in fact, dead at all. Once he's come round and he's able to tell us what happened, we'll be able to get you released. Yes, please. I do hope you're right. Might explain why you're talking to an undead cat girl. <laughs> Ahem, excuse me. Inspector Gregson. I couldn't help overhearing what you said, and on that note... I have some good news and some bad news. Oh. What do you want first? Always, every time, the bad news comes first. When hope is all you have, hold on to it. That's my guide and principle. Right, well, in that case, the good the good news it is. Huh? Sorry, but it's just a lot easier to explain everything that way. Then why'd you ask me my preference? As you might have heard, the victim, Mr. Shamspear, was just unconscious. He's come round now. Yes, we saw it happen. It's all in all its terrifying glory. He's still been treated by the doctors, but we've managed to get a written statement from him already. Oh, isn't that wonderful, Mr. Natsume? Oh, thank goodness, it's all over then. I can leave this somber cell. Sorry, no, that's not on the cards. What? Why ever not, Inspector? Mr. Shamspear has implicated someone as being responsible for what happened last night. Implicated someone? Oh dear. Y you don't mean... I'm sorry to say I do, yes. He pointed the finger at you, Mr. Natsume. Ah! By sweet poison did he seeketh to end my life. That wickedest ca- Caitiff? Caitiff? Soseki Natsume. No. So I'm afraid you'll be appearing in court as planned. We want to make the necessary preparations. Aww. And so, once again, Soseki-san found himself having to take the dock in the Old Bailey. 
whether his room was haunted or whether he was just terribly unlucky, I knew, it had no I, knew I had no choice. The following day, I would represent him in court and do my utmost to break the curse that blighted him. Is that the chapter end? Yeah. All right. I know we're only at two hours of the stream, but I think I'm gonna wrap up there. My throat is a bit sore from sleeping with the window open right next to me. And um, it fucking dried out my throat last night. <laughs> so it's been a bit croaky today. And doing the voices is, is not good for me. Might go make myself a little lemon tea. But we did one chapter. We did one chapter. Thank you for stream. Thank you. Thank you for coming. I'm sorry it's only a short one. But tomorrow night we're going to be playing some WoW. We're going to play some WoW. And, um, yeah. And then maybe on Friday I'll play more Ace Attorney. Thank you for stream. That's all good. Thank you everyone for for hanging out with me. I'm excited to see where this case goes. Having a sore throat and doing voices is hard. Yeah, that, like it's not it's not like a sick sore throat. It's just I it was really cold this morning and I had the window open and I think it just dried out my my throat. So it's been a bit scratchy today. But it's okay. We're all good. Alrighty. Who are we raiding? Thank you for stream. Thank you. Thank you everyone for hanging out. Um, let's go say hello to... Hmm. Hope you feel better tomorrow. I I will. I won't be stupid and sleep with the window open. <laughs> it's too cold for that now, I think. Even though I do I do love uh being able to get extra cozy because it's like you purposely made the room cold. <laughs> get some wets, thank you, Nova. I should probably do that. Oh, I need that. I'm gonna go make a um uh, like a, a hot lemon drink to help. Alrighty. Hmm. Hmm. We're going to send you all to Caradon. Caradon is playing Star Wars Jedi Survivor. We're going to go say hello. If everyone wants to copy the raid message, taxi raid beep beep as we go through. That would be appreciative. Um, but yeah, I will see you guys tomorrow night. Uh, we're going to play some WoW. I know it was confusing. I, the category said WoW earlier, but... <laughs> Tomorrow the category will say Ace Attorney and I'll be playing WoW. You'll all be like, I thought this was Ace Attorney. <laughs> Alrighty. Thank you everyone for hanging out. I appreciate you all. Good night, good night, good night. See you tomorrow.